Well, hello, church. It's Pastor Jeremy coming to you from the Parsonage with another weekly devotion. Today, we continue our tour of the stained glass windows at the Court Street United Methodist Church as we look at another one of the small windows on the west side of the church balcony. The three stained glass window displays high up on the western wall of the sanctuary tell the story of how Jesus triumphed over sin and death and the powers of this world. But we've already looked at the Gethsemane window. In that window, Jesus prays that God will help him to overcome the temptation to save himself and avoid the cross. The story goes that Jesus remained in the Garden of Gethsemane until his enemies arrived. Jesus was arrested and his disciples scattered. The next morning, Jesus was tried by his enemies and sentenced to death. The Gospels tell us that Jesus died by crucifixion, as two criminals were also crucified to either side of Jesus. There are no windows in the sanctuary depicting the crucifixion of Jesus, but in this resurrection window we can see, off in the distance, three crosses standing on a hill. After his death on the cross, Jesus was laid in a nearby tomb. According to the Gospels, that tomb was in a garden. The friends and followers of Jesus mourned and rested on Saturday, the Sabbath day. This window tells the story of what happened the next day, on Sunday morning. The four Gospels all tell the story of that morning a little differently. This window gives us a scene from the Gospel according to John, with some elements borrowed from the other Gospel stories. John's Gospel tells us that early in the morning, Mary Magdalene, a friend and a follower of Jesus, went to the garden tomb. The other Gospels tell us that Mary went as part of a small group of women. Now, the burial on Friday had been a hasty affair, and they hadn't had time to properly prepare the body of Jesus. The other Gospels tell us that the women brought oil with them in order to anoint the body of Jesus. In this window, we see a bottle of oil close beside Mary. The Easter story in John's Gospel doesn't talk about any oil, however. In John's Gospel, it seems that Mary has simply gone to the tomb in order to mourn. She misses Jesus, and she wants to be close to him in the only way she can. When Mary arrives at the garden, she discovers that the tomb is open and empty. In a panic, she runs back to tell the disciples that Jesus' body is missing. The other disciples rush to the tomb and look inside to see for themselves. Then, in shock and confusion, they head back into town, leaving Mary in the garden, alone with her grief. Mary weeps in that lonely spot, then, because she can't believe that these things are really happening, she looks in the tomb again. This time, she is stunned to see two angels, two messengers of God dressed all in white. In some of the Gospel accounts, there are two angels in the tomb. In other accounts, there is only one. In the window, we see only one of the angels. The angels ask why Mary is weeping, and she explains that someone has stolen the body of her Lord. Then Mary turns away from the tomb and sees another figure. He also speaks to her. Woman, he says, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Mary doesn't recognize this person. Maybe her eyes are filled with tears. Maybe her mind is not ready to believe what her eyes are seeing. Maybe this person is standing in shadow or hiding his face or transformed somehow. For whatever reason, she doesn't recognize him, and she assumes he is the gardener. She asks him where the body has been placed. The figure speaks again. Mary, he says. And suddenly, she recognizes Jesus. Jesus tells her to go and tell the other disciples that he is about to ascend to his father. In the window, we see that one of Jesus' hands is raised in a sign of blessing, 
while the other hand points Mary away on her mission. That hand also points toward the ascension window, which is located just to the right of this smaller window in the sanctuary. Now this small window is packed with details and symbols. Notice the hands of Jesus. Notice how he holds three fingers together and folds the other two down towards his palm. This hand gesture has been used in Christian blessings for more than 1,500 years. The first three fingers point up to heaven, giving praise to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The other fingers curve down to earth, representing the human and divine natures of Jesus, who came into the world to save the world. The red robes of suffering from the Gethsemane window have been replaced with robes of white, and Jesus carries a white banner. In the ancient world, the color white represented victory, and here it represents the victory of God's love over death. Just behind Jesus, we see a pile of weapons lying on the ground. In Matthew's Gospel, we learn that the enemies of Jesus placed guards at his tomb to keep his followers from stealing his body. Maybe they left these weapons behind when they fled. Or maybe these discarded weapons represent the peace that Jesus came to teach the nations. It seems appropriate that this window should be packed with symbols, just as the story of the resurrection is packed with hope. In this window and in this story, we find hope for those who are grieving, hope for those who are unjustly accused, hope for those who long for a message from God, hope for those who long for peace. It's also worth noting that this is the 17th window we have examined in our tour of the sanctuary, and it is also the first window in which we see the figure of a woman. In the story of resurrection, we see that Jesus puts first the people whom this world, and often the church, put last. Would you pray with me? God of resurrection, you give us hope when hope is gone. Fill this world with your resurrection power, that every tear might be wiped away, and every weapon discarded. Through Christ the risen Lord we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today. You can find a new devotion right here each Wednesday at noon. Until we meet again, keep washing your hands, keep wearing your mask, and do not be afraid.